Hey, what's up? This is Chris and Kai from Blood Youth. You are watching Rock Sound. Title kind of came about. We weren't too sure on a solid title until the very last stages of recording, and we had already had a track called Starve, and that word kind of summed up everything pretty perfectly to everyone. And uh, everyone took such a liking to this single, and people were getting the logo tattooed on them, and you know, tagging Starve, and everyone just took like took such a an attraction to the word Starve and their own meaning behind it that we just decided that it was the strongest album title to give. Yeah, we were definitely throwing around names in the studio. Um, and that was the one we all kind of perked up at and it all just kind of made sense. And uh, I don't think it feels like, you know, couldn't be anything else now. Uh, <laughs> uh, lyric wise, you know, it was it's a Starve is a, a perfect sort of overall look at the album kind of uh, you know, what's when you're listening to it, it's kind of showing a little taste of what's on the way, basically. Uh, we wanted to really dive in with the lyrics, not just on Star, but like the whole thing. We wanted to scare people, make people feel a bit uncomfortable, use things we, you know, say things we've never said before. And then, you know, that kind of translates with the video as well. That's like really intense and you know, violent. And, and that's really, you know, we we wanted people to take a look at what was going on in our heads, our mindset when we were at the studio and everything like that. And you can really hear that, I think, on all the tracks, especially Starve. Mm. Uh, yeah, well, Keep Your Life uh, kind of came from an idea lyrically when I was kind of like, uh, I found it quite interesting that we all go through trauma, we all go through pain, we all go through stuff in life and, and we're never shown how to deal with it and everybody deals with something you know, a different way. Um, mm -hmm. To me, that track kind of rounds up just trying to grasp onto any sort of substance you can get in something that is so far gone and dead to you that it's just, you're just like lying to yourself. It's keeping something alive, which is already long gone. That's how I see that track. Yeah, yeah well, when that song was originally written, well, it was actually, we had finished writing and demoing the album, and then I was just kind of like, I had this slow song kind of idea. It was super simple. The main riff is just two notes. And I was like, well, this could be kind of fun to do. So I just kind of demoed it with our dude Robin, and it came out sounding super dark, and just everyone just loved the sound of it, and it just fit really perfectly into what we already had. So after that, we just decided to roll with it and see where it went. And it just ended up becoming something completely out of our hands and just naturally made into something really, really good. Yeah, I can remember, I can remember being in the studio and listening to that. And I remember when we first properly heard it in like the studio speakers and stuff like that, we were like, this has got to be a single mm. just because it was so different. And it, you know, it starts conversations and it starts conversations about this band that we've never seen before. And, you know, it's it, in a way, it's kind of cool seeing people argue about what Blood Youth should sound like. And that's up to us. That's literally <laughs> what we wanted. And that's exactly what we wanted. And we knew yeah. that was going to happen. So it's all very deliberate. It was cool to actually be away from civilization for a while whilst we could actually focus on it. Because in the past, we've always kind of been around a city or like a center of town like or home. something. Yeah. yeah. Um, and with this one, it just felt like we were in the middle of nowhere. We all kind of had to rely on each other more than we normally would. And the whole process kind of brought us closer together as a band. And it also just completely magnified the process of making the music because there's nothing else you got to do there. The internet's whack. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do. There's no town to go to. So, you know, you just can't do anything else but work on music. And that was kind of the goal and one of the reasons why we wanted to go there. Yeah, we really wanted to kind of submerge ourselves. I've always kind of talked about how when I recorded the vocals for Beyond Repair, it was all very comfortable because we were in our like hometown. And Literally like two months yeah, ago. I'd record the vocals, go home, have a bath, watch Netflix and just be totally like chill. Uh, but when we were in the sh in um, at Middle Farm, we were just kind of we're in it and like everyone's in the room and it's really gritty and intense. And that's that's the whole point of this album. And that's why we did it. And it made you feel disgusting as well, because you couldn't get a night's sleep without at least 20 bugs crawling oh, and flying all over you. Because yeah. the cabins that we were staying in was part of the studio complex <clears throat> and it was like an underground cabin. Everything was made out of wood and there was just natural brick walls. And there's like the back door to the barn right next to the bunks. 
it was just bug city so it was just overall yeah. a really nice but disgusting place to be <laughs> yeah amazing studio yeah. but there's like we were there in the summer and there's like all the spiders were like hornets like, before we went to sleep it was the the thing on it like you have to see how many bugs you have in your bed <laughs> yeah so and, like yeah so, yeah, that so cool. yeah that's all on the album <laughs> <laughs> yeah. absolutely that's, yeah. a, that's exactly it we wanted to kind of well uh, it wasn't on purpose as well yeah. this whole like you know kind of in that like new metal and kind of that new area of music that we're now being put into i mean obviously that's where i personally love to be but it, it happened just totally naturally because everything that we've done in the past it was just playing it too safe and everyone kind of had his they we hate the idea of people thinking that they know us and this album I'll figure this out yeah, yeah and it's just it it was becoming predictable because the first thing i would write or anyone would write was exactly sound like it sounded exactly like what we'd done before and it just got to a point where i was like well this is fucking shit like why are we doing this if this is just the same thing that we've done before yeah so we took a step back and that's why it took so long is because we really really focused on just putting in like putting stuff into the music that we've wanted for so long but we've kind of been a little bit too scared to actually take that step and maybe cause some controversy in the process you know so having doing it it's now landed us in a whole area of music which we always wanted to be in but i guess to get into that spot in the first place you have to cause controversy and that's what we were scared to do in the first place mm. yeah that's i think that, like you like with songs that keep you alive yeah. and things like that you know there's a lot of stuff on the album that I guess your typical Blood Youth fan won't be expecting, but that's what we really wanted. And, you know, if we can kind of be talked about in the same sentence as those bands, you know, sounds like this is a bit reminds me of this. That's all compliments to us. And Blessed. We, you know, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it was seeing so many bands putting out new things and this is probably one of them just for me, but I, if I hear a band so-and-so is putting out a new track, I'll just be like, oh, right, I wonder if it's like they've done something new, you know? Mm -hmm. And then it's just exactly the same thing they've done before, and somehow people love it, but they must be just, like, miserable, and the creative, like, the creative integrity behind them is just completely flat. And I know deep down that all of us could even, like, all of us could push way further with the envelope than what we've done. So... It was just kind of a process of starting that push with the music and then having everyone else follow and yeah yeah i, yeah, I, I kind of i think that we wanted to make an album that kind of took us out the category of the scrappy underdogs and that's what we'd always been throughout the, all the releases everyone had always been like oh these small town guys and the uh, hardcore melodic hardcore, melodic hardcore uh, and like uh, we've done all this stuff and we wanted to be we want to be considered you know, with all those UK heavy bands, and you know, it's a uh, it's something that we really needed to do to kind of break out that cycle of um, being. We don't we didn't want to be predictable. Absolutely, and also just the fact that a this is what we wanted to do all along. We all love that style of music, the heavy shit, and b it's pushing the envelope. Why would you not want to push your envelope as an artist? Like. Yeah. If we if we could do it, you know, we don't want to put out the same thing. It's too easy, mm. and it was so easy that we actually did it. We wrote an album before this album, or we wrote half an album, and we just figured it's it's too much. Like you know, it's just so easy and predictable. So yeah. if we can predict that ourselves, then that's not good. And we wanted to surprise ourselves, and that's just what we did because we got these songs back, like "Keep You Alive," and they were like, "Fuck, this is like mm. way different," and, and this is cool. It got us excited. However, in the past when we were writing and recording. We knew exactly how it's going to sound. We knew exactly how it's going to be, and you know, so. I think we've been really, really lucky, and just been given the opportunity to play such big shows with such big bands, and we learn so much from those bands, and literally like musicians we've looked up to all our lives, and I don't know, you you never really like prepared for it. Are you? You just like you just jump into it, you pushed into it, and you just got to deal with it but it's it's something that luckily enough we've had to you know deal with um you know as long as this band's been going that's all it is is just taking that leap and seeing what happens i mean i'm shitting it for the tour already <laughs> like <laughs> seriously i i don't know what's gonna break i don't know how it's gonna be you know and we've done it a billion times so mm. you know that's how it is you never know that's the fun <laughs> or not <laughs> that's why we all lose hair 
guys. Ugh. We're going shoe gays. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the next is going to be nope. It's going to be like eighties pop in it. So, so. Les, where do you think we're going? We're dream pop. Yeah, dream pop. We'll go, we'll go that Who knows? We'll see. It's it's, yeah, we just kind of pick a genre out of a hat and just see what we do. <laughs> <laughs> what we want to do. Uh, absolutely you know, not. <laughs> no, whatever. Well, you know, we never really know. If we could tell you that right now, then we're doing this all wrong. So. Uh, yeah, exactly. One thing that there will be is riffs. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah, so that's all we can guarantee. And, always. More, and more 808 drops. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just... We just want to keep playing the biggest shows we can, and we're not scared to do that. Um, we want to keep touring. We want to keep touring as much as we can. We want the shows to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and that's always been the goal. We've never, ever set ourselves a limit of where we want to be as a band and we just want to keep keep it you know well actually i have said if we tour with slipknot then i quit yeah fair so. to be fair i said that after we play i said if we ever played with every time i die i'd retire from music and that was a couple of years ago yeah. still here yeah. <laughs> <laughs>